Welcome. This is Pipeline Help, the She Code Africa Contributhon project. It is May the 16th, 2022. Thanks very much for joining. Uh, topics on the agenda today, uh, questions and answers. Seems like the most important topic. And uh, Sophia and Afi, let's, let's put your questions and, and try to find answers on that. And then if there's time within the hour, we can do other topics as well. What, what other topics would you like besides question and answers? There'll be a lot of questions from you. Okay, good, <laughs> then, then let's get started. Go ahead, please. Okay, um, so um, Afiz and I um, worked over the weekend together and we were able to highlight um, contribution we will be making for this project for all, in, all the uh, plugins that we are listed. And, uh, we started with some of them and we actually like some of your assistance. Great. So what would you, how can we help? Okay, um, so if we should start with the build plugin, we went to um, the plugin page and discovered that there were no, um, there's no enough um, information about the plugin, just an introduction, which you can also see in the Git repo here. Oh, hang on just a minute. I'll get there. Sorry. It's build pipeline, isn't it? Yes. Okay, and that, nope, so that's not it. So I'm, I must have the wrong one. Build step, build step. Ah, build step, thank you. Build step. So pipeline build step, this one. And now if we open that in GitHub, yes, this is the one you were working on, is that correct? Yes, this is one of the one. Yes, this is what we're, one of the ones we're working on. I um, discovered there is little or no information about the plugin and just the introductory part. And would actually want to have more information there, but would want an advice on exactly what to do because um, for now we just probably have some examples. Probably we would like to include some examples, but. Um, unlike the Git plugin, it has a lot of information, and I think um, we'll, if you can maybe guide us on what exactly to focus on, we can um, make a useful contribution. Very good. So, so would it help if we look together at the kinds of places where people would use this plugin and how they might use it to do to do interesting things for them? Would would that help you? Yes, please. Okay, so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up, oh, whoops, I'm going to bring up my Jenkins instance, and we're going to look briefly at, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a, uh, a build job. So let's, let's give ourselves a new folder just to, to put things in. And then inside this folder, I'm going to create a new, and I want to create a new freestyle, a new pipe free pipeline job first. So let's call it um, call or use build, build step to call other to, to launch other builds. So here I'm going to create a pipeline step that's going to use the build step. And, and I, whenever I create a pipeline, I like to first be sure that hello world works. So I'm doing the hello world, I'm building it now, and there it is, it worked and it said, hello world. There's the hello world. Okay, so the, the this is a fake for now, but we're going to use the build step to launch other builds. Now the idea then, oh, let's make this text more readable there. So then, then now I need something that can be launched. 
So I think I need a new, a new, a new item here, which is, um, let's call it a pipeline that will be launched. So this is the thing that's downstream. And again, I'm going to just create a hello world entry here. And I'm going to run it once just, just to see that it works the way I expect. And there it is. And it says, hello world. Okay, so now I've got two jobs here. One is use a build step to launch other builds and the pipeline that will be launched. So now what, what a user would do is they would configure this pipeline, the, the one that's going to do this launching, the top level thing. And in pipeline syntax, they click build and the job to configure, they want to use that other job that they're going to build. So they want pipeline that will be launched. And I need to get the text of that that way. So pipeline that will be launched. And now it hints to me, hey, this is a job that it recognizes. So it knows about that job. And I could have made this much less text. If I just said pipeline, it will suggest that and I could click it. Okay, so now should we wait for the job to finish? For this time, yeah, let's say yes. Do we need a quiet period? I'm going to say just for fun. So three seconds. And now I'll generate the pipeline script and that's what I want to do. So what I just did is I've, I've generated a script that says the upstream will ask to launch the job named pipeline that will be launched, wait three seconds before doing it, and it will wait for it to finish before the job will continue. So, so here we go. So this is use build step. I'm gonna put that in and then I'm gonna say echo goodbye world. Any questions so far, Sophia? No, really. Or is this or is this not helping? And did you have a different question that I'm I should be should be doing something else instead? No, it's helpful. It's very helpful, actually. Okay. All right. Good. So, uh, so here, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to watch. So, remembering that the pipeline that will be launched. It's only been run once. We see down here that there's, it's only been executed once. And the use build step to launch, it's been launched once. So now I'm going to do build now. And when we look at what it says, it says scheduling project something and starting building something. And then it says goodbye world. So here's the hello that I started with the goodbye that I put in, and here is a separate project that got run. Now, when I look at this page and refresh it, you'll see job two ran, even though I never clicked build now on this page. So, so what the build step did is launched another job. And, and now if we, if we do things like, for instance, let's configure this one, make it a little more dramatic. We're going to, instead of just echoing hello world, we're going to sleep for 15 seconds. We're going to wait inside this job. So I'm going to save that. And now when I click use build step to launch other builds, I'm going to do build now and watch what happens here. Notice that it started one second ago and six seconds in, it hasn't finished yet. Now, if we look at the trend initially, it only took three seconds the first time I ran it. This time it's over 11 seconds and still hasn't finished. And that's because that 15 second delay that I put into this job, sleeping for 15 seconds, that 15 second delay was waited for by this upper level job. So, so one of the use cases that's good to describe is in this pipeline syntax generator, 
wait for completion. What does it mean? And how do we explain to people why it means that? And so what wait to com for completion means, it's got, you may ask that this pipeline wait for completion on the downstream build. And here's what, but then it says, okay, now what is all of this other help? And this kind of thing gives us lots of insights on, oh, wow, there is a return value um, that, that I could use that can give me other examples. So not just, not just that, hey, let's explain what wait for completion means, but now this is giving me a hint and I could remember other things about this. So questions so far? Yes, so I was gonna ask about those parameters um, that comes with that wait for completion. I don't like that's relevant or I don't, I don't know. Oh, are they supposed to be in the pipeline step and it was omitted because I can't really um, tell the usefulness of it. Okay, could you could you ask your question again? So your your question was, is way, this? Oh, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, the, this other parameters down here after may experiment. Yeah, ex yes, those ones. Like, what what am I supposed to? Am I supposed to like? What are we going to use them for as a user? Ah, good, good. So how would how would these things how would these things help? A real user. Good, yes. good question. Exactly. Very good. Okay. And and what what I think you just asked is why would a real user care about build number return from a, a from a weight? And what's the what's the case? What's the use case? The story that someone might care about that one. I th I think is what you're asking, right? So yes. so let's let's talk about that because I think that's a good that's a good place to look at these kind of things. So so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take what the snippet the syntax generator suggests here, and it says, hey, the return value of the step can be used to get information. So let's let's do let's get the return value. Now now you're going to get process of switching from declarative to scripted pri pipeline. And so build So and I apologize that this is for me a rather more advanced topic than just, but I think it, it's a way to answer your question. So what this is going to do is this is going to say, and then we're going to say echo, build result is is so what we're doing now is we are remember remember the return value from the the build step and then display the result of that to the user so let's let's try running it now and just to make things go a little faster we're going to change this sleep we don't need to wait 15 seconds, maybe we wait three. Because three I can wait patiently for. Okay, so now remembering how I'm configured, I'm going to call that build, st that, that build step and remember its return value in the build result variable. And then I'm gonna display it to the user. Let's see if this gives us what we hope. So here it is, it schedules the downstream job, started building it. Now we enter the three second wait period. And here it says, oh, this is what we got back. Now that for me is not terribly helpful. What is that? Well, what this help says is it includes, let's see, where is it? Inspect its dot result and so on. So what this thing has is a bunch of fields a bunch of attributes that I can look at like dot number. So, so let's look at that one now by saying configure it 
And now instead of build result, we're going to say build result dot number. Okay, so it's now referencing that build result thing that was returned from build and looking at the number field. Uh, and so now I need to make this, oh, no, no, I should do it this way. It's much easier. We can all see it better if I do a second echo statement, build number is build result dot number. And while we're here, let's see if we can get one more, which is the, let's see, a good one is the result. That one can be, can be interesting. So build result is this. Here we go, save it, build now. Three seconds wait. Build number is five. Build result is success. So now if we look here, the last build number here was five. Now I'm gonna change this and I'm going to say, let's fail. Let's make this one, instead of success, let's make it fail. And intentional failure. I think that's the syntax. We may have to look it up. Build now. Waiting the three seconds, starting it. And it says, oh, look at this. It says it failed and stopped the execution of the upstream project. So the downstream failure that we'll see here caused the upstream to fail. Again, a use case that we'd like to describe. What if I want to ignore the downstream failure? That's this propagate errors thing. So again, now when I generate this, it says propagate colon false if I wanted to ignore the downstream failure and just report it. So I've got to configure this job and say, I'm going to add a new parameter here, propagate faults, and let's try building it again. And this time, what it should do is this job will schedule the downstream, start building it, wait the three seconds, see that it failed and still report. It says build result is failure, Build number is seven. Now that's my downstream here. So let's, I'm going to build this one now just to give us a new number. So we're going to build several copies of this just to be sure that it's distinct. So ready, here we go again. Build one more time. And what we want to explain to the user is oh, this is what propagate false means. And this is what, what the, let's see, the other, the wait for completion means. Did, did that help a little bit, Sophia? Or do you ask more questions? Help me understand what, what else we should, we should highlight. Yeah, I actually think that helps. Um, meaning that with the um, results we get from the downstream um, pipeline build, don't, we could actually like make, a, make a, a conditional statement that if this build fails, we could want an, an alternative or a backup build or something. Yes, exactly. Very good. Yeah, you understood it precisely. It's if because of, because of what I've done in this example here where I said, remember, remember the result of the build that I just called. And then I could do a conditional based on build result dot, dot number or build result dot result. And now if I, if, I, if I don't want to worry about that and I say, if I call a downstream job and I just want it to fail everything, then I would re remove this propagate false or set it to propagate true.
Now let's take out this quiet period, because again, that, that's something that can be explained, but in this, our particular example, we really didn't need it. Now when I build, it's going to immediately start it and it won't wait for three seconds looking for other changes, it just starts immediately. So, so does, does that address your question with regard to, to what might we say in this help about wait for completion and what might we say in the help for propagate errors? So as an example in propagate errors, and, and here's a, I think they're both valid, valid places. Propagate errors for me is a little easier to see how we might add an example here to this text, where what we would say is the pipeline syntax generator generates the following when we, when we disable propagate errors. And then you might say, and we would do this because we want the return value. We want to use the build result, but we don't want to block or disrupt execution of the current job. We just want to get the return value and re the, job val re the job result and use that for further logic. Does 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 that sound okay, Sophia? Or have I have I yes. have I missed yes, something? It does. Yes, it does. it does. Okay, so are there are there other questions that you'd like to ask? Um, should we hear from Afis first of all? Good, good. And I I fear that Afi seems to have dropped off from the call. I don't. I she may have had internet issues or some other surprise. So absolutely, we can certainly check with her as well if she if she rejoins us. Okay. Um, so, sorry. Why actually like um, writing some examples for the HTTP request? Um, I really couldn't generate a, a, a syntax with credentials, HTTP request with credentials. I was able to do for the custom editors, um, the multi-part file, and the others, but I couldn't do for um, the credentials. I don't know if you could demo it. For... So, and so, was that was that the credentials you were using with the gets get with the checkout step, or was it with something else? Mm, it's HTTP um, request plugin. Oh, with HTTP request. Okay, so let's let's do that one. Very good. Let's let's try that. I've I've not used that plugin before. So if you don't mind me doing experiments here live, let's let's do that experiment live. So let's create ourselves a new job that is and make an HTTP request. Okay, so again, the usual thing, I need a hello world. I wanna be sure that it builds. So hello world looks good. Okay, there it is. So now we want to generate an HTTP request that we're somehow going to use. And so that HTTP request, we'll need the pipeline snippet generator to help us generate the HTTP request right oh dear do i not even have it installed on my on my i i must not have it installed just a minute let's get that plugin installed okay install http i do not shame on me okay so we've got to first install the plugin http request and here it is Okay, so download now and install after restart. Okay, so in about 30 seconds, we'll have a, a running Jenkins with 
because of how busy this particular one that I'm running is, it would take a while. So we'll. So what we want to do though is we need to we need to create an HTTP request that is a good example using a credential ID, right? So just a minute, let's see what I can do with that. As a, as a possible target for an HTTP request, maybe what we ought to do is try, what's a place where we would go with an authenticated HTTP request? Maybe to uh, ci.jenkins.io? What if we tried there to launch a build of, because I happen to have permission to do this, you, you may not, but I have permission to launch a build. So maybe what we do is we find a plugin that it's okay for us to launch a build on it. And that we'll do that with an HTTP request. Oops, wrong one. This one, CI, elastic axis. Okay, so we look at the REST API here and we're going to use HTTP to make a REST API call to schedule this build. So here's what it says. It says to perform a build post to this URL and you could do this with your own server. I just happen to be using ci.jenkins.io. So this is the URL that I need to open with a post request and I'll need to use credentials because if I don't use credentials, ci.jenkins.io will, will just discard my request. So did we ever come back here? Come on, come on. It takes a long time to restart my big Jenkins instance, just moments. So while that's restarting, I'm gonna bring up a text editor and make use it as a place to put some notes. So the URL to open, is that. And that will ask to schedule a build. Now, what, what I think we should do to experiment with this is we should first try to open it without credentials and um, confirm that it fails. And we should see that in the Jenkins job, then use a credential to open that URL and confirm that it works. Does that work okay for you, Sophia, if we take that approach? Come on, Jenkins, get back. Okay, we're getting better. Sorry for the slowness. Let me go look at it and see what's keep making it slow. Interesting. It's just starting. Ah, here we go. It's back. Very good. Okay, so into our folder and make an HTTP request. So here I'm going to do the configure and for the moment, I'm going to close the tabs on my right-hand side and I want to use the pipeline syntax to find out how to make this HTTP request. So I click the pipeline syntax generator, HTTP request. The URL that I need is this one. And it said that I need to use post. So I change the HTTP um, mode to be post. And now if, and I, I definitely do not want to ignore SSL errors. So I'm gonna generate the pipeline script. So here it is. That's what their suggestion is for my, my command that I should run. So let's try that here. And with my apologies, I have to have shorter lines. 
So this says, it's going to say, hello world. It's going to submit a post request to ci.jenkins.io asking to build the Elastic Access plugin. So let's go check to see what things are looking like right now before we start it. So the Elastic Access plugin right now is, its most recent build is number 170. So remember that number 170, we're going to save this now and build it. So it will say, hello world. It will make the HTTP request and then it should tell us something about it. So it's opening, a, it's doing a post to that location, sending the request and it says forbidden. Good, okay, so that's the failure we hope to see, right? It says, I tried to access this URL and wasn't allowed to do so. Now to your question, how do we add a credential to this? And I think we do that by clicking advanced. And now where is a credential choice? I don't see, oh, oh, here we go, authenticate. There we go, so let's try this one. And now do I have a credential that I can, there's the Jenkins API token, which I may not already have a credential here that I can use. So I may need to actually add a credential for right now. Let's, let's just borrow one of these and try it so that we have the syntax, but I expect it will fail because none of these are for ci.jenkins.io. So I'm gonna generate the pipeline script to use a credential. I'm using this credential, but I think this API token is actually for my own Jenkins controller, not for ci.jenkins.io. So let's try it just to see. And here, if I grab that, I only actually need this additional parameter authentication. Everything else is the same. So now when I build it, remembering that last time when I built it, the output said, sending the request and it got a response code forbidden. So now let's build it again. I expect the same thing, but I think this time it will mention that it's trying to use a credential. So here it says, using authentication, I still expect it to fail because I don't think that's a valid token for ci.jenkins.io. So now it's, it's opening up the request. And it says, oh, ooh, notice this is different. Instead of forbidden, it says unauthorized. So it got the request. It saw that I was trying to offer a username or a, a credential, and it says that credential is not authorized to do this. So the next step I'd need to do is I need to create a credential on ci.jenkins.io that is valid that I can use. And for this, I'll probably have to turn off my uh, screen sharing because I don't want to record permanently this new credential. I'm gonna start the process and then we will get to a point where I'll stop. The, the screen sharing so that you can't see the token. So on my Jenkins, what I do is I here go to credentials. Is that, oh, no, 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 I'm wrong. I'm my mistake. Kevin, you may have to help me here. I think I need to do configure. Yes, this is what I want to do. I want to create a new API token on ci.jenkins.io that I can use to to do this work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the add new token button and it will then generate a token for me, show it to me on screen and then I can paste it into a new credential over here on, on this dashboard. So here I'm going to create a credential, let's see where credentials here. 
and I'm going to get ready to create that credential. Then there will come a time when I just have to have to put the let's see folder. And I want to add a credential here. So here the username will be Mark E. Wait. The password is something that I will enter in when I've stopped sharing the screen. I'm going to assign the ID, which is ci.jenkins.io credential or Mark E. Wait API token. Okay, so API token for ci.jenkins.io as mark e -wait. Okay, so I will put the password here, but I'll do it after I've stopped sharing my screen. Any questions so far? Okay, so we're, we're oh. just, oh, go ahead. Yes, Sophia. Okay, because I know I tried creating a credential in my local app, but I couldn't. I went through the manage Jenkins manage plugin then global conf uh, configuration but i couldn't create a credential that i could use uh, sophie you did you did actually remember oh I did. that's what you use for the example yeah that's what you use for the example but it wasn't to this it was rather at the um, manage plugins that one was on the left side menu and then you added it oh, okay. but i don't know how mark did this yes it's different yes so, different. so so let's let's go through the likely path you took to create the credential because i could do it the same way that you did i think so okay. i think what you probably did is you went to manage jenkins mm -hmm. then and then manage, you went to creden manage, manage credentials creden yeah and now here, unfortunately, the user interface is confusing. And I apologize for how confusing it is. It is just confusing. Um, what I have to do is find a place where I can click a down arrow that lets me add credentials. Yes. And mm -hmm. so for instance, I like to do it from this stores scope to Jenkins pick. And I say, I want to do here. Oh, no, not add domain. I want to do on global add credentials. And I could do the same thing up here, global, click the down arrow, add credentials. I, I find that as a really strange place to have to go to, because my mental model says, oh, am I adding a credential to the invalid user and password? But the answer is no, what, what I'm doing by clicking this domain drop down arrow is I'm adding a, a credential to that domain. So I think what you probably did was, and, and I sincerely apologize, the UI for this particular page is really weak. I click add credentials and it says, I'm adding a credential at the system level and it's an, a global credential. And here, here is where I'm adding it. So this is, I suspect probably where you were adding it. And we could add ours here as well. Let's just do it this way so that it's, it's recorded there. So this one, I'm going to make make some additional comments here, folder scoped. This one I did in a folder. But we're going to take that and we're gonna do it the way you, you did it, but we're going to put it all the way up at the top level. Okay, so, so what we have now is we're going to get a new credential. Its token will be this ci.jenkins.io-markyweight-api-token. Its description will be API token. And let's, let's make it even more clear. Top level API token for ci.jenkins.io. So comfortable so far, Sophia, Afi? Yeah, so far, so good. Yes. Okay, and now we're at the point where user Mark Waite was about to click this add new token button. And this is where I apologize, I have to stop screen sharing because otherwise I will show everyone and record for everyone exactly the value of the token and that, that would not be good. So I'm gonna stop screen sharing. I'm gonna press the add new token button I'm going to take the text from that add new token button 
and I'm going to paste it in here as, as this global credential. Let's put these two tabs right next to each other so it's clear to me where I paste it. So I'm going to paste it. Here's the password. I'm going to press OK. Once I've pressed OK, I can start sharing screen again because I can open it and show it to you and it will keep the password hidden. So add new token is what I'm going to do next after I stop screen sharing, paste it here and then press OK. OK. All right, so sharing is going to stop. And now I do the add new token and it shows I need to give it a name like uh, she code Africa. token demo. And I'm going to press the generate button. Now it gave me the text. And it says on the screen, it says copy this token now because it cannot be recovered in the future. I'm going to paste that text into the password field. And already I can start sharing again. Because even before I press OK, you'll see what this, how the screen looks and it's already not showing the password. So what you see now is here's this, here's this password that I pasted already hidden. I'm gonna say, okay. I'm gonna drag this screen off and press the save button there. Okay. Now back to my configure, bringing this back on screen. There is that she code Africa token demo. And now what we really want to see is where did it go? And here it is, ci.jenkins.api, top level global API token. And there it is, and the password is concealed. So now what I wanna do is, any questions so far on the steps that we've taken generating the token on ci.jenkins.io and then using it in my Jenkins controller. No. Okay, so now let's try using the snippet generator to reference that. Okay, so we want to do this again with HTTP request. And I need to remember the URL again. So the URL was this. And we need to make it post, not get. We want to heed SSL errors. And continuing downwards, ah, authenticate. And here, oh, I'm so glad. Look at that. Marky Waits top level global API token for, okay, so now let's generate this pipeline script. And what we see here, I can copy that thing, go back over here to my, where was my, make an HTTP request, configure this. And here it is. And if I put in that again, Okay, so this is saying it's going to authenticate with that API token I just created, and it's going to use the Elastic Access access URL to check where we are on ci.jenkins.io. Here it's still build number 170, so we haven't built and done a new build yet. I'm going to save this, build it, and now this time, if we're lucky, it will tell us, hey, I used. There's the URL. Here it's using my new credential. Good. It's sending the request. And it says, oh, 201 is in the accepted range. So now if we go look on ci.jenkins.io, we see that job number 171 has started. So, so does that give you a sense of how we could do a credential-based? Now, now, 
writing that in an example is is probably easier than actually getting it to work the way we just did because the example you just give some arbitrary text for the credential ID and assume the user will replace it with their own. So Sophia and Afi, okay so far, or is there more that we should discuss about how the authentication, how, how to get to this point? Because it may be that what we would want to do in a long-term thing, not for this project, but someday in the future, we might want a video of this kind of thing where we say, look, here's how this is done. Because it, it, there are a lot of steps to get a credential out of some other system and into your Jenkins controller. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. I actually think so. Uh, thank you, Mark. Thank you. And and my apologies for showing you some of the, the uglier parts of Jenkins in your exploration. You're very patient to put <laughs> up with this. Thank you. Thank you for being so so considerate and, and open to try these things. Yeah. Thank you. Um so so far we've actually gotten clarity on two major plugins that we had issues with. And I don't know if there is time for us to actually explore the inputs plugin, the input set plugins. Let's do that. We've got we've got about 12 minutes left. So if you'd like to try the input step, let's let's definitely do that. So let's first find it on the plugin site. It was input step, is that right? Yeah. Um, Sophie, are you going according to the list that we came up with? Yeah, I'm going according to this. Okay. If you have any other question, you could ask actually. Uh, it was just um. Also, we wanted to notify him that um, the changes that he tried to make the last time that was not reflecting. It was because do you remember it was because he was not um referencing it in that other file. Do you remember? Yeah, I messaged him that we are able to figure it out. Okay, okay, great. Mark, okay, we're actually referring to um the last um meeting we had where you were trying to have help to capture. I think capture should be in the input string plugin. And it wasn't showing. So we're able to figure it out that first, yes. Okay, so so you were able to figure out that that's great. So you were able to decode how to, where to put things. Tell me more about what you were able to where you were able to figure out. Uh, okay, um, sorry, um, let me get the name of the plugin. So the name of the plugin is the input step. Okay, um, I'll have to show my screen that I will need to show you. Okay, I think we can go ahead. Let me prepare. Let me get this then. I'll show you. Okay. So would you like me to would you like me to 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 start a new job that uses the input step and maybe we can use that for some experiments? Yes, yes. yeah, we'd like an example. Okay, so let's create a pipeline that uses the input step. So hello world, build it. Confirm that it worked, which it did. Configure. Okay, now we want to use pipeline syntax to do something with input. And so wait for interactive input. Um, please provide your input. 
So here's the simple one, right? So please provide your input and we're going to do this. Save it and run it. So it started. And now it went red. And now we have to look to see what's going on. Why did it go red? And if we look at the console output, we'll see. It says, please provide your input, proceed or abort. Now, if we want a prettier view of that, we go to Blue Ocean, where it says, please provide your input and proceed or abort. And there are other ways to look at this, but this is, this is one alternative. So when I press, press proceed, the job will run to completion. Now, if I did the same thing, so pressing the, the run it again, this rerun loop, what if I press abort? Now it said, oh, I stopped the job. It did not complete. So now when we go back to Jenkins, what we'll see is notice this icon says, oh, the job was aborted, whereas the first job was success, or the job number two was successful. So the major focus for this plugin is to get inputs from users. Correct. And, and usually the input is, is a simple yes or no, shall I go forward or not? Um, but, but the goal of this thing really is to ask them for, for things. Now, now, this allows us to do parameters and then the parameters, the values are returned. So we could in fact ask for more things. So let's, let's try that. And again, we're gonna use the syntax editor to the syntax generator to help us. So input. And now we go to advanced and just for, okay, let's see, um, waiting for, let's see, how about we ask a different, what do you want? And we're going to give it a custom ID, my custom ID. Okay, button caption. Yes, I mean it will be the okay button. And now we're going to do add a parameter. We're going to add a Boolean parameter, which is, we're going to make it very obviously named Boolean param. It will be true by default, Boolean parameter, true by default. So what am I def defining? I'm defining an input step with a different message. What do you want? Using a custom ID and the OK button will have a different text on it. Yes, I mean it. It will be on the button. And it should ask me for a value of Boolean param. So let's generate that step and put it back into our sample job. And we can actually do multiple inputs. So let's, let's do this. Okay, so this says I'm going to take it, uh, maybe we'll comment out the first. So I'm going to take input from the user that asks them a question and expects them to, okay, so input requested. There we go. So now it's put me into a, a screen asking me for, for my input. I could do it here, or if I want, I could look in, let's see what Blue Ocean does with this. What Blue Ocean says is, what do you want? And there's a Boolean parameter. And if I uncheck it or check it, and then yes, I mean it is the button to say yes. Now, if I run it again, I could, un I could leave the Boolean parameter check, but if I click abort, it will cancel the job.
Okay. So now the, the, the gap there, I think, is that, hey, users may not understand. The, the first pointer is we always want to point them to pipeline syntax generator, right? It really is the best way to do this without, without guessing what the syntax is. Just let the generator help you. But still, it would be good if we had some words on the, on this, on the pipeline documentation page that said something more than the very simple thing that you see here. Yes, that's actually what we intend to do. Great. Okay, so that means that we could give more information about the pipeline syntax generator and certain options that it could go with when they are looking. Um, Sophie, um, the, the list, the next one. We have a few minutes. Oh, we can actually go through the list. Sorry. It's, yeah, it's I don't think we can go through all. So we might just have to Yeah, we we'll, okay. we'll just stop here today. While we walk okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Mark, regarding what I was going to show you, is actually um the um, HTTP request plugin and the custom editor. We are trying to have help to it. And when we tried it the last time, it wasn't showing. So like well, we were able to figure it out during the weekend ourselves. So I'd like to share that with you. Oh yes, please share. Are you willing to share your screen or or do you want to just describe it? That would be great. I would love okay. to know how you how you discovered it. I will share my screen. Okay, thank you. So uh, remember, we just actually added, we just only had the HTML page here, the custom header, but we did not actually, we did not refer it in the Jellyfy. So we're supposed to come here and then add the, the URL to the, the help. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, you're brilliant. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, so, so the thing was, this jelly file needed a change to refer to where the help where the help is. Yes, yeah. uh, although it's not so for all, there are some that you don't necessarily have to refer it, but for this particular case, you have to. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sophia, thank you very much. I appreciate, I love it when I learn something new. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mark. That, that's that's a truly thank you very very much that's wonderful that you discovered that and certainly it's in the it's in the documentation did you find it in the documentation for that or did you just you just looked at the source code and made a good guess and said oh this is obviously missing mark didn't realize it actually um went through the um, documentation but i couldn't find anything but i had to go through the source um, code yeah Excellent. Sophia, thank you very, very much. I, I, I have learned something. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Any other topics we should discuss today? Yes, so we actually like trying to work together so we could wrap up on time. And from our least, we're able to discuss three plugins. And now the other one was supposed to be the node processor where we're supposed to have more documentation to the um, plugin page and also the clean workspace plugin and basic step plugin and some other plugins, but I don't know if we we're going to discuss it today. I would I would leave those. I think you've already got more more in the input step, then we have time to do. So I think just input and HTTP requests, those two, if you make progress on those or or the the one, let's see, the which one, was it HTTP request that you just showed us how to do? Yes, HTTP request. Yeah, so if, if you were to do those two, that already is for me quite an accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you very much to both of you. 
I, I believe we are scheduled for another session later this week with our, our usual time. Are the two of you okay with that as a, a next session? Yes, we're okay with that. I Let's see, okay and now that. I need to look to see when. Okay, so we're scheduled for Thursday. Is Thursday okay? Yes. Great. All right. Thank you to both of you. Thanks very much. I'll get the, the recording posted of this. And if, if I've missed past ones, hopefully within the next 24 hours. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank Thanks you. Thanks to both of you. Talk to you Thursday. Yeah, thank you, Bruno. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.